Hi, we're Shakespeare Art Studio. I'm Phoebe. And I'm Phoebe's mum, Francesca. We've been coming up with ideas for you to try at home. Find us on Instagram, Facebook and YouTube. In this workshop, we're going to make a, a papier-mâché bowl. And uh, that's nothing very special. You've probably done it before in school and I'm no particular expert. But again, it's something that you can do with most of the stuff you've got around the house. Okay, the next um, step is to prepare the um, mould that you are going to put the papier-mâché either into or on top of. So for that, I've got some stuff from the kitchen. I've got a small glass bowl and a rather nice Moroccan wooden bowl. So you've got to be a bit careful if you use something that's a bit precious. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna give it a quick layer of vegetable oil or Vaseline. It's more something to stick cling film onto and I've experimented without cling film and I found it was much better if you do cling film it. So then you get the cling film as flat as you can and that is the surface onto which your first layer of paper will go. To make the glue, the, there are various methods. Two of them involve flour. The old-fashioned papier-mâché was always flour and water and, and turning that into a paste. And then the third way, the more kind of studio approach, is to use PVA glue. So for PVA glue, you want to just add at least probably two parts water to the PVA. So I'm building up the layers. I've probably got about four layers on already. And um, I'm using my old bank statements because I'm always wondering whether to put those in the recycling. So this is a brilliant use of them. No online fraud for me. They'll be safely under a layer of paint in this bowl. Get loads. You can scrunch it into the glue. Sometimes you can actually add, if it's got a bit of residue, you can just add a dryish one to soak up the paint. And then you need to pay attention to the edges. It doesn't matter if they're raggedy, because later on we can trim them or we can make a feature of that raggediness. But you do want to make sure that you don't neglect your edges because uh, you want equal strength everywhere. Oh, my balance looked fairly healthy in those days. I think these are 2017. Don't think it's quite as healthy anymore, but hey ho. I'm probably getting now to about six to 10 layers everywhere. So the next thing to do will be to really let this dry out. I'm just going to ease it, ease it off the bowl. Yeah, it's coming quite nicely. There we are. It's got its layer of cling film. So let's see if we can peel that away. Right, I'm gonna turn this bowl into something a little bit more elegant. I'm going to give it a nice, stem like this. So this is the end of some masking tape, or some duct tape. So I'm just carrying on with PVA glue, hoping I'm getting it in the middle. When that glue dries, that will attach it. And then I'm just going to bandage it in here. And let's just see if I've attached that okay. I think that's nice and central. And we can always clip these down we'll decide what to do with those later. So here are the bowls. This one has dried on overnight and um, it's not looking too bad. But I don't feel the raggedy edges have worked so I'm going to cut it. And it, it also has dried a little bit um, not exactly perfectly round. I think this is very important to realise when you're making things they do not have to be perfect. And I actually ban the word perfection from my students when I'm teaching them because there's a wonderful Japanese concept called wabi. It's wabi sabi. That is the Japanese word which has no equivalent in our language. And it's um, the concept of things being really beautiful because they're not perfect. And you often see in Japanese ceramics the little wobble or the press of the thumb in the clay and um, Edmund Duval who's a wonderful ceramicist has explored this idea as well. So back to just not saying you're a perfectionist and being quite happy with things just as they come out 
and if they're not quite straight or perfect or round or equal on top it just doesn't matter okay so I'm just going to give I'm not sure what we're going to do with these bowls quite yet but I'm just going to give it a nice thick coat of emulsion paint Okay, so I'm going to talk about gold leafing. Um, I'm afraid this isn't something you've got in your kitchen probably. You'll have to uh, go online and order some. But before I show you the Dutch metal, which is the cheaper version, I'm just going to show you what the original real gold leaf looked like. I got given this little kit by my father, who um, was a picture restorer and framer for many years. And this is what the old boys used to cut their gold leaf on. Then there was this brush made out of badger hair that was used to pick up the gold leaf and once placed on this it could then be cut with this special knife that is lovely and flat so that you can actually cut the pieces of leaf. So this is um, a much cheaper version of it and this is what you can buy online and um, it's, called, it's called metal leaf or foil leaf. It's a lot more robust so even when it's a loose leaf you can actually pick it up in your hands. Now to stick it on we need something called size. And again, you can order that online, but I think also you can actually use PVA glue. A little bit into here, and paint it onto the inside of the bowl. And I'm going to go up the edge and just over on slightly on the other side so that I can fold the leaf over the top. Now the only difference between size and PVA glue is that the sticky the sticky point of the glue lasts for longer and you can see from my fingers it's beginning to get tacky and when it feels tacky and not not wet but tacky you know that you're ready to lay the leaf down. I've put talc on my hands to stop any stickiness. It's flat and you can see it's splitting and little white bits are showing but that doesn't matter either. And it doesn't matter if it overlaps either because where it overlaps it, it won't stick. It'll just brush off with this little brush. Where, where I didn't put glue it won't stick. So I can't quite remember how far down I went but let's just see. Okay, so you can see with the big bowl we've gone nearly all the way around. We're just doing the rim on this one. Put a bit more. And here we are, two finished bowls. Mm -hmm.